Hey, this is Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. In this video, we're gonna show you how to program your iDatalink Maestro ADS MRR or MRR2 module to be set up for your specific gear, make, and model and the radio you're installing. Let's get started. All right, so here at the bench, our example here today is gonna to be the Chevy Camaro kit and we're using the MRR module. This also applies the MRR2. Uh, it's a needed piece with this specific dash kit because it's gonna be the module that's gonna connect and control everything. Now this Chevy Camaro kit's a really nice kit that we're installing, but it's not gonna work properly until it's pre-programmed. So after getting everything pulled apart here, we like to lay it out. It is tempting to get everything hooked up, but the first thing we need to do is program our MRR module, because not only is it going to need our specific year, make and model, the radio we're installing, but it's also going to print out the instructions and connection guide so we know where all these pieces here on the bench will connect in to and will be set up properly for a vehicle. All right, so we're here at the computer. Now we're obviously working on a Mac here today, but again, remember that this software works both on uh, PC as well as Mac. Now what we're operating off of is this iDatalink Maestro, it's called WebLink Desktop. If you don't have WebLink Desktop, you need to download the app and install it to your computer. Uh, you go to iDatalink Maestro's website. Uh, we can put that link down in the description. So. What we've done is we've booted up our WebLink desktop software, and this software has already detected our, our, our module. We went ahead and plugged it into the computer. It's ready to go, it's detected. The first thing we need to do is flash it by vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and select our vehicle. This one actually happens to be a 2013 instead of a 2014. It's a Chevy. We're gonna click on Camaro. And again, it's all, right? So this fits all trims of Camaro. You have to determine which steering wheel fits specifically your make and model. Um, ours happens to look like this one on the right, so we're gonna click that one. Now, Ken, because this kit is only compatible with iDatalink compatible radios, uh, these are the main five brands that you can install with this specific kit. We're doing Kenwood, obviously here. Now we're gonna go ahead and type in the model number and you're gonna also need the serial number. The model number we're doing is DDX9707S. There it is. We're gonna type in our serial number. The only uh, software available is this newer, newest version. Click on that. Now there are two different versions of this kit. If you have an older version of this kit, and it doesn't come pre-terminated with a plug that adapts to your specific radio, and it has bare wires, you're gonna need the older kit. You'll select that. In our case, we have the newer kit with a plug and play harness option um, that allows us to basically have it plug and play. This is the one that we want. We're gonna click on that one, and we'll hit continue. This is the CAN-1 making that harness plug and play. We got that. This is for radar detectors, the third party accessory. We're not installing this today, so we're not gonna click either one of those. We'll hit continue. Now this next page is important because this basically identifies what factory features through that data that we wanna retain on our new radio. We'll keep vehicle info on, gauges on, advanced camera features. We do have a factory camera, we'll keep that on. Keep on OnStar, we'll keep on our factory amplifier. This one is important as you see the question mark. If you have some sort of branding within the vehicle, this is important to keep on because it's gonna keep the balance and fader. But if you are uh, installing this to a factory base trim model that doesn't have an OEM amp, you'll turn this off. We have to keep ours on in our case here. Keeping our OEM camera on, we have the parking sensors, we're gonna keep park assist on. We have climate controls. We don't have the USB media player, uh, nor would we probably want to keep that on um, because obviously that's going to be uh, done all through the new radio anyways. Secondary vehicle display, if, if so equipped, we'll keep that on just because. And then serial volume controls, obviously we want that on as well. Going to the next page here. This is where we can specifically set up the different options for those steering wheel buttons. Now, we'll obviously have a couple of defaulted ones. We have volume up, volume down, seek forward, seek back. But what you can do is set the initial press or the press and hold function for every button. This also applies to the actual dash bezel. Remember, it has those buttons there as well. 
There are some that are pre-programmed that you can't change, but you can still add uh, additional options to the other assignable buttons, like one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly set those up. Okay, hit continue. Verify everything's looking correct here. We'll hit flash. And it's gonna take a few minutes to basically take everything that we've done here on our software and implement it on our, our, our module. Okay, everything's been flashed with success. Now, the benefit of this screen, it also has the install guide and the wallet card, which you can download. You can also send it to an email as well. Type in your email. Uh, that's gonna give you that printout where everything will be connected for your specific install. All right, so we're back here at the bench. Now we went ahead and printed out our instructions here. And again, indicates where everything connects. And the nice thing is, for the most part, this is gonna be 99% plug and play, especially with these new adapter harnesses. So with this, this is gonna walk us through step by step where everything connects here, shows us what we're not going to use, and shows us how everything connects and what port everything connects into. Now, obviously, this is just an example, right? It's gonna differ depending on the year, make, and model, and radio you're installing in your specific vehicle. This case, this kit is nice because it shows the climate controls on the screen. We can control the fan speed. We also programmed it to adjust the, the temperature up and temperature down with the extra assignable buttons offered by this specific Camaro kit. But most kits will also show the gauges, which is super cool. And in addition to that, you'll also have your uh, information icons. So you can check doors open, tire pressure sensor, uh, battery voltage. And if you have a check engine light, you can actually diagnose it right from the screen directly. It's really nice and it's offered through all the iData Link Maestro kits. So that's about it for this specific install today. If you have any questions on what we did here or how to program your module, just go ahead and throw them down in the description. The MRR is a fantastic way to integrate more features from your vehicle into your new aftermarket radio. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next video.